ಅಂದೇಯ ಕಂದೇಯ ಮಗೆಯ ಪಾವರ ಕೋರ ಕರುಣಾದಾನ ಕೋರ ಕರುಣಾದಾನ ಗೋಪಿನಾಮಿತ ಸಕಲ ಪಾರ ತುಮಿ ತ ಸಕಲ ಪಾರ ತುಮಿ ತ ಸಕಲ ಪಾರ ಪಾರ ಜನ ತರಿ ತುಮರ ಸಕತಿ ಜನ ತರಿ ತೇ ಪಪಿರ ತೇ ಪಪಿರ ಗೋಪಿನಾ ಗೋಪಿನಾಮಿ ಕೃಪಾ ಪಾರ ಬಾರ ತುಮಿ ಕೃಪಾ ಪಾರ ಬಾರ ತುಮಿ ಕೃಪಾ ಪಾರ ಬಾರ ಿವೇರ ಕಾರಣೆ ಆಸಿಯ ಪ್ರಪಂಚ ದಿವೇರ ಕಾರಣೆ ವೀರಾ ಕೊಯ್ಲೆ ಸುವಿಸ್ತಾರ ವೀರಾ ಕೊಯ್ಲೆ ಸುವಿಸ್ತಾರ ಗೋಪಿನಾ ಗೋಪಿನಾ ಅಮಿ ಕಿ ದೋಷೆ ದೋಷಿ ಅಮಿ ಕಿ ದೋಷೆ ದೋಷಿ ಪಿರಾ ಗೋಪಿನಾ ಅಮಿ ಕಿ ದೋಷೆ ದೋಷಿ ಅಸುರ ಸಕಾಲ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ 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 ರ 
हर कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे भक्त विरा का तोर शिला भक्त विरा का तोर आकार्यता को आकार्यता को प्रभु पास प्रभु पास प्रभु पास प्रभु पास अलीर भावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की ओम अज्ञान विरंद संजन शलाकया चक्षुवन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदाख्यम ददाति स्वरांतिक वंदेहम श्रीगुरोषेयुत पदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश श्री रूपम साग्रजात सह गण रघुनाथन्वी तम सजीव साइत सवधूत परजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधाकृष्णपादा सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता नमा ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे नमा ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती नामिने श्रीवाषवानवी देवी दायताय कृपाद कृष्ण संबंध विज्ञान दायिने प्रभव नम माधुर्योज्वल प्रेमाढ़्य श्री रूपाग भक्ति श्री गौरकुणाशक्ति विग्रहाय नमोस्तुते नमस्ते गौरवाणी श्रीमूर्त दीनतारिणे रूपाग विरुद्ध अपसिद्धातिणे नमो भक्ति विनोदाय सच्चिदानंदनामिने गौरशक्ति स्वूपाय रूपाग्वराय ते जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna. Today we are celebrating the appearance day of one of our greatest Acharyas in our line, who is Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So, the spiritual master of our founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And Bhaksan Sri Thakur's spiritual master is Gaur Krishna Dal Babaji. And he accepted Shiksha from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So in the entire disciplic line of Rakshi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Bhaktivana Thakur is the first Acharya who revolutionized the preaching in a very big way all across the globe. In 1896, he wrote a book called as Life and Precepts of Lord Chaitanya. And he sent it to Germany in the library. And in that book, he wrote, you know, when will the time come when the Europeans and Russians and Americans, all of them will come to Sridha Mayapur and understand the philosophy of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And together playing Mridangam and Kartal, uh, will loudly proclaim, Jaya Satchinanda Nagaura Hari! Jaya Satchinanda Nagaura Hari! Like that he wrote in that book. Huh? So, and that became true. The same year, who was born? Srila Prabhupada was born, 1896. Huh? So he predicted also, one very great personality will appear very soon and propagate this mission all over the world. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's son, who is called as Reya Vishnu, he is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who is guru of our Srila Prabhupada. Hmm? So, because of uh, limitation of time, I am only taking one section of his life. Huh? See, he accepted the post of Deputy Magistrate in the government of Bengal in 1861. Huh? Later he became a Collectorate Officer. Hmm? And he was the head clerk of a Judge's Court in uh, Chaudanga. Huh? <clears throat> so he is very famous for making strong decisions. <clears throat> And he did not have to think too much. He could immediately make decisions. There are the reasons said why it is so. See, he didn't allow any humbug in his court, it is said. No upstart or cheater could stand before him. What was the style of Bhaktivinoda Thakur? When he was in uh, Jagannath Puri, I heard that morning 10 to 1 and afternoon uh, 3 to 5. How many hours? That's all, he will go to court. Huh? And in these five hours, he handled 45 cases. How can any human being handle 45 cases in five hours, you may wonder. So he had one particular style. He told the uh, claimant or the anybody, the candidate, that whatever you may want to speak in the court, you have to put it down in writing uh, and give in advance. So don't keep anything for yourself. Put everything down in writing. So they would write everything. And he would go through it in advance and just highlight some three, four bottleneck questions. So in the court, when he would go, as soon as the candidate would come, you ask the question and he will be clean bold immediately. And he will immediately, in three, three to five minutes, he will finish one, one case. That's what he was doing. He was very intelligent. Therefore, in the British times, there were only three high court magistrates in India. One of the three was Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So British government had so much regards for Bhaktivinoda Thakur they especially built the railway track for him and also arranged the special carriage to pick him up from home eh, daily. So, until the recent uh, last few years, there was this line, I have been going to Mayapur Yatra since 93. 1993 I have been going. Every year we used to see the railway line. Only two years ago they removed it. Otherwise, this uh, railway line has been there in front of the Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house which was specially arranged to welcome, I mean, pick him up from home and because he had resigned from the job and the British government did not accept the resignation. They said, we cannot, we resign, you resign. And they said, we cannot leave you because you are such a valuable commodity for us. So they arranged to pick him up from home in a special tram, special train. So during a pilgrimage in Vindavan, he came to know that there is a gang of decoits there named Kanjahars. They used to rob and kill the pilgrims. So, he collected all the evidence about those fellows and gave to government. Uh, and then the whole uh, 
team of dacoits was wiped out. So he was very strong in his high court uh, magistrate position. See, although he was very perfect in his profession as a high court judge, he was also very deeply absorbed in spiritual contemplation also. As you see here, he himself says here, here, Sarada Charan Mishra, one of the Calcutta High Court judges saying here about him, he says that even under the pressure of official work, in charge of a heavy district, he always had time for devotional contemplation. Whenever he met him, he says, immediately it will turn to subject of devotion, Dvaitavad philosophy and the service of God is the only thing he longed for. Like that he says. So here is a very valuable tip for all of us. Our modern day life is keeping us super busy. Some people say, because I am so preoccupied with academic duties or professional duties, people say, or household duties, I am not able to absorb. But here is a man who was holding a very big position for the entire district. And he was always absorbed. Whenever there was an opportunity, he would take, take it as a chance to introduce Krishna to people. Let us talk about his preaching days. He was a head, headmaster of the Medinapur High School. He studied many popular Bengali religious sects and all. And uh, he understood that the only religion, that is true religion, is the Bhagavata Dharma. Uh, as taught by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now what is Bhagavata Dharma? How is it different from other religions? When you say, I am a Christian, I am a Muslim, I am a Hindu, I am a Sikh, that is material religion. Because it's based on the body. Huh? Or you say that I belong to Telangana, I belong to Andhra. Uh, earlier Andhra and Telangana are one only. Huh? Now they have divided into two. Now sometimes people say, I am from Telangana, you are from Andhra. Both are same only at one time. Before that, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu were one. Do you know that? That was called Madras. Now somebody may say, Radesh, I am from Tamil Nadu and we are from Telangana. We are from the same area, which is called Madras. Correct? No? <laughs> so... Anything based on your bodily identity is material. Huh? Whereas Lord Chaitanya taught that every living being in every part of the universe, 8.4 million species, they all are souls who are lovers of God, part and parcels of God. So to awaken that love for Krishna is the goal of life. That is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching, which is universal religion. Hmm? And that's what he found to be the best. At that time, you could not get even one copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. We are getting it easily in our gift stall here. Huh? At that time, even one copy was searching. Desperately, he couldn't get. Hmm? In all the books and shops and libraries, monasteries, all over Bengal, he tried. Hmm? In 1868, um, when he was a deputy magistrate, he received the copies of Srimad Bhagavatam and CC from one person. At that time, you know, his faith in Lord Chaitanya and Krishna developed it became complete, he became completely absorbed day and night in remembrance of Krishna. And these two books became his life and soul after that. Huh? Yeah. So he studied uh, Srimad Bhagavatam with the Bhavarta Dipika commentary of Sridhar Swami. Hmm. And also he copied the Sat Sandarbhas of Jiva Swami, like uh, you know, Priti Sandarbha, Tattva Sandarbha, uh, Paramatma Sandarbha, all those Sandarbhas he copied. And then he made a special study of Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasam Sindhu. So in this way, along with his profession, he took out time to study the devotional literatures. And then at one time, he was made the manager of the Jagannath Temple in Puri. At that time, things were very unorganized there. See, Jagannath Puri Temple is a millions of years old temple. The millions of years that Rathyatra has been going on. So, there was a lot of disorder there and problems there. So, they made him the in-charge. So, he set up a Bhakti Mandapa where every day there must be discourses of Srimad Bhagavatam. That was his new policy he made. Otherwise, in the temple, there was no class going on. In all of the Rishkan temples, our Srila Prabhupada, he made that every morning after the Mangalati, Narasangati, Tulsayati, Guru Puja should be there and then finally, Bhagavatam class. So, the discussion about the Lord's Instructions and pastimes is absolutely vital. Hmm? So he introduced it in Jagannath Puri also. So he used his government powers to establish strict regularity in the worship of the deity. That is, uh, proper worship, proper offering of bhoga, 
and cleanliness standards and strict adherence to the Pancharatra Gavidi is everything he introduced. So that this is a very vital temple uh, for the Sanatana Dharma people, the temple of uh, Jagannath Puri. All over the world people come to see Jagannath Puri. So he was given the charge of that. He spent long hours discussing uh, Krishna Katha and chanting holy names. Uh, at places like Tota Gopinath, where Lord Chaitanya used to hear Bhagavatam from whom? Gadadhar Pandit. Yeah. And Siddha Bakul and Gambira. Gambira is the place of Chaitanya. Siddha Bakul is the uh, Samadhi chanting place of Aridas Thakur. And Tota Gopinath is the place of Gadadhar Pandit. So these three are very, very vital places for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. <laughs> so he would chant long hours in Siddha Bakul. He would study Srimad Bhagavatam long hours in Tota Gopinath. Uh-huh. And he will go to Lord Chaitanya's uh, uh, Gambira hmm? and in this way absorb himself in Krishna Leela. In this way he spent time. So one time Bankim Chandra Chatterjee huh? he, he wrote that famous poem. Anybody knows? Which one? Vande Matra. Vande Matra is the one. Huh? So he, wrote, he showed a book about Krishna. He also had a book written on Krishna. And then, when Bhaktivana Thakur saw, he wanted to give some improvement points. So, he preached to Bankim Chandraji for four days. He hardly took any food or any sleep. And Bankim Chandraji completely changed his ideas. Because he had made many mundane speculations about Krishna in his book. All that he removed from his book. And then his book uh, later on confirmed with the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. So, here is one very important lesson for us, especially those who are very successful writers, speakers, stars, you know, they have a very great influence on society, isn't it? Huh? In Pune, one very influential lady came, she asked whether we can introduce her book to our devotees. So, she had written a book on Mirabai. Huh? So, the book had a lot of things uh, on her own. So, we told her that first you read the Srimad Bhagavatam commentary of Prabhupada. Huh? And you make this book in line with that, then we can, you know, we can uh, forward your book. But for that you have to purchase one Bhagavatam set, we told her. Mm-hmm. So we sent her to gift stall after that. Mm-hmm. So anything written about Krishna should be in line with uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy. So uh, there was a king of Tripura uh, who is a Vaishnava. Bhaktivinoda Thakur went to his place and spoke about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Uh, and chanting holy name for four full days huh, in King Tripura's palace. Actually, his son, Bhakti Sansar Thakur, also went to kings and gave lectures in their halls. Huh. Why they would meet such big people? Because the kings had the influence over all the people. Hmm. Yata Raja, Tata Praja, as we say. If the kings took it seriously, then the Praja would take it seriously. Manipur, kings are devotees of Krishna. So, all the Manipuri people picked up Vaishnava culture. Hmm? So, here is the information about his initiation and title. So, he accepted formal initiation, Vaishnava initiation from one Bipin Bihari Goswami who comes from Janava Devi's line. Huh? Like, we have Nityananda line, Janava line, we have Advaita line. So, in the Janava Devi line, he took from Bipin Bihari Goswami. And in a few years after his initiation, he was given the title Bhakti Vino Thakur. Huh? Because he was powerfully propagating the philosophy of devotion, uh, bhakti to Krishna. So, in Vrindavan, uh, he met his Shiksha Guru, Sri Jagannath Das Babaji, who had a tremendous influence on Bhakti Vinod Thakur. His thoughts, his vision, his ideas of spiritual life had the greatest influence. Uh, in our line, we keep uh, Jagannath Das Babaji, Shiksha, his Shiksha Guru, because Bipin Bihari Gosai gave him initiation, but there was hardly any touch with him. Uh, sometimes it happens in our families also in India. They take initiation from some Kula Guru in family. But later on when they grow up, they get actual shiksha from his khan. Uh, and they become very powerful. So Bhakti Thakur's actual shiksha and the Vaishnava understanding came from Jagannath Das Babaji. Hmm? He wrote how many books? More than a hundred books. Hmm? And another major achievement is, one day when he was, uh, when he came to know that some of the uh, people of Nadia, they claimed that Mahaprabhu's 
birth place is in one gram ahead of the ganga river so they had actually made up a kind of matha kind of thing for making money huh? so he was very suspicious about that place whether is that the real place of mahaprabhu's birth so he took all the history historical accounts and maps and everything so while he was searching uh, one day from his rooftop of the house uh, he saw a brilliant light emanating from the current yoga peet hmm. and in that place a profuse quantity of tulsi plants were growing also uh, so uh, it was revealed to him that that is the birth place of lord chaitanya later on it became confirmed with the map and everything because the ganga changes her course also sometimes uh, later on jagannath das baba ji was asked to check whether is that the birth place of chaitanya mahaprabhu so uh, one bihari his devotee his disciple would carry him on a basket huh? he carried him on a basket he was at that time 148 years old who <laughs> jagannath das baba ji so he brought him there as soon as jagannath das baba ji was brought to that place he jumped off from that basket and then he danced there and then he said this is the place where nimai appeared he said and so his confirmation and bhaktinath thakur's estimation exactly matched hmm? and then now what you see the yoga peet now in uh, mayapur dam that is that's the birth place where we go generally in the same side little ahead of our iskon temple is that you know that so introduced many preaching innovations we will see that now hmm? see wrote uh, hundreds of authorized spiritual books <coughs> these are all nice different books huh? all these books you see many more books so he set up on sri chaitanya yantra a printing press at the bhakti bhavan hmm? it's a house he bought in calcutta where daily worship of uh, sri giridhar was started hmm? so here is a machine you are seeing just like later on bhaksan sir thakur also got a machine <clears throat> but he got a machine from cleveland ohio america huh? So my spiritual master recently he went to Mayapur, and he saw the Bhakti Sarang Sitakur's uh, place. This big machine was there. It was written Cleveland, Ohio. <clears throat> my spiritual master was touching it to his head, and then he stood next to it and told one devotee, "Can you please click one photo?" So that devotee was telling in his life, His Holiness Ranat Maharaj never requested a photo if anything to be taken. This is the first time he said. he wanted to stand near that machine touching it he wanted to take a photo because he had that spiritual pride of uh, his one of his ancestor gurus who did such a great thing actually <laughs> so that is the printing machine he brought from cleveland ohio similarly he also had a printing press so all our acharyas you can see they are having printing presses to print books and uh, publish you know that has been their hard starting with bhaktinath thakur followed by uh bhaksan sir thakur and our shil prabhat starting bbt hmm? 1881 bhaktinath began publishing sajjan toshini a vaishnava magazine yeah see he printed a small booklet gauranga leela smarana mangala stotram huh? so chetnam and then he wrote this book famous book i told you chetnam apu's life and precepts hmm? 1896 he sent it to mcgill university canada huh? and many other respectable institutions so it was even reviewed by one fraser who is from royal asiatic society so it's very reputed book hmm. so bhakti nath tagor 1887 he quit the government service and he went to vrindavan to spend the rest of his life Lord Chaitanya came in his dream. What he told him? You will certainly go to Vrindavan, but first there is some service you must perform in Navadvi. When will you do that? He asked him. <clears throat> so, this is what he told you. Jagannath Das Baba Ji was in the middle picture. He jumped off from the basket and said, "Hey, it's only my Janma Bhumi." Like that he said when he came to that exact spot of the birthplace of, you know, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So you are seeing this yoga peet temple. To build this temple, Bhakti Nath Thakur went door to door to Grihastha's homes and told them, "Give me only one rupee coin." Huh? People are wondering why he is collecting such a small donation. 
he said i want to give maximum opportunity for grihasthas to be a part of this temple construction if i collect 1 1 rupee if 10000 people give 1 rupee then how many people benefit 10000 people instead of 1% making the whole temple so like that he went and door to door and he begged for 1 rupee coin yeah so he inside the gaur vishnu priya date is there then he took a, uh, for two years off he took and he acquired a plot of land in godrum dweep which is the first place where lord nityananda started his preaching godrum dweep nadiya godrum me nityananda mahajan bolye nadiya godrum me nityananda mahajan pate ache nam hat jivar karan pate ache nam hat jivar नादेया गोद्रो में नित्यानंद महाजन नादेया गोद्रो में नित्य सो दैट प्लेस इज कॉल्ड सुरभि कुंज इवन टुडे इट इज देयर द फर्स्ट रिटायरमेंट हाउस दैट भक्तन ठाकुर मेड वेयर ही सैट एंड डिड भजन बट द मोस्ट अमेजिंग थिंग इज ही नॉट ओनली डिड भजन देयर ही लुक्स लाइक भजनानंदी बट ही हैड 2500 भक्ति वृक्ष ग्रुप्स कैन इमेजिन हाउ मेनी all over bengal and they were all reporting to him in godrum dev he was doing bhajan but the report was coming from 2500 places <laughs> so we have to learn how to do that you sit in uh, radha madan mohan and do bhajan and 2500 people should send you reports huh? so like that he was conducting huh? amazing 1890 he established namahata dar huh? yeah so he said i am a sweeper many names he gave he said Uh, yeah high class vaishnavas are called by the name dobi and uh, sweeper and such names he gave why sweeper means one who sweeps all the dust in the heart of conditioned souls huh? dobi means sometimes if we keep a ink pen here it makes a big round mark which cannot be easily washed with soap so you need to really put some kerosene or something to remove it so similarly a vaishnava who can remove very thick anarthas he is called as a dobi huh? that kind of names he gave huh? so he, then he took uh, leave from the government 1891 for 2 years and lectured in clubs societies many organizations and all huh? many namata centers open different districts of bengal hmm. so like many many publications let's go ahead so he started sri vishwa vaishnava sabha which was also continued by his son bhakti santosh sir talk also it's a sabha which is dedicated to preaching shuddha bhakti huh? so he published a small booklet entitled vishwa vaishnava kalpavi huh? so here is uh, shishir kumar ghosh who is the founder of the amrit bazar patrika he gave the title to him i consider you to be the seventh goswami he wrote to him huh? and that became became a very famous name there is a book called the seventh goswami about bhakti vinod thakur huh? he said i have not seen the six goswamis of vrindavan but i can see you are a real goswami he said you are seventh goswami he said see he introduced the gaur purnima calendar generally our english calendar starts with january to december whereas gaurabda calendar starts from march to march huh? so that he is the one who introduced it that kind of patrika hmm? calendar so there was one tree in which a ghost was living in a place called champaran huh? and there were also people who used to worship the ghost and beg the ghost please don't attack us huh? like that so and it also people said it influences the mind of the local judge whoever uh, any devil devilish person would go and worship the ghost the ghost will influence the judge to give decision in his favor huh? many people like people to jadu tona and all no people do like that so what bhakti nanta ko then he engaged the father of pandit ramabai one very great scholar to read the bhagavatam under the tree so when bhagavatam was read and the the tree broke down see here huh? and the ghost had to flee from there huh? yeah that was the end of the ghost there after that people developed a firm faith in bhagavatam hmm? bhagavatam drove away the ghost hmm? so there was one fellow called bishak bishak sen 
near Puri, and this fellow was claiming that he is Vishnu himself, huh? and he was uh, taking many of the local women, uh, and he would do his own rasa dance with them, hmm? imitating Krishna's rasa dance. He would do. He was having a promiscuous relationship with many women, hmm? and he would be sitting in front of the sacrificial fire, and he would, you no, know, wave his head like this and put it in the fire and take out. Uh, he said, "I am Vishnu, who has descended in this world as Vishakshin." Uh, so he also would produce fire from his own head. Also, he was a yogi baba. Uh, so he had, he also had two men on either side. He called one is Brahma, one is Shiva, uh, and he claimed to be Mahavishnu. Uh, so as soon as the matter was brought to Kedarnath uh, Bhakti Nath Thakur, he invited him to Puri. Uh, where he told Vishakshin, if you come here, you can also see Lord Jagannath, and we can have a meeting. Let us have a discussion. He called him. So Vishakshin said, Why should I come to see Jagannath? He is only chunk of wood. I am the supreme in person, like that he spoke. A very offensive person. Huh? Mayavadi. Hmm? So immediately, Kedarnath he arrested this fellow and brought him to Puri and threw him in the jail. Hmm? He was guarded by three dozen Muslim constables there. Huh? And chanted to policemen from Katak day and night. This many people are required <laughs> to keep this fellow. Huh? Lot of uh, fa false followers. Eighteen days trial lasted, and thousands of people gathered. Huh? Everybody demanded release him, release him, huh? like that. So not only that, this fellow threatened Bhaktuna Thakur, if you don't release me, you will face trouble. So sixth day of the trial, um, Bhaktuna Thakur's second daughter. Kadambini, she was only seven year old child. She got high fever and almost she died, but she survived. Uh, within a day, she recovered. Uh, and he understood that this is the power of yogi trying to attack his daughter. You know what he remarked? That's the most important thing. Yes, let us all die, but this rascal must be punished. That was his statement. Which means he would never tolerate hypocrisy. Uh, he said it is better for us to die, uh, live our lives, but the truth must be upheld. Hmm. And then, when Vishakshan was being uh, ready for jailing, the district medical officer cut off the yogi's long hair. At that time, all his powers were also gone with the hair. Hmm. And he fell to the floor like a dead man. Hmm. So after three months, he was moved in the central jail where he took poison and died in 1873. Hmm. So in this way, he took severe action, you see. So there was one another fellow, Raghunath Babaji. Jai Shri Shri Radha Mahamon ki. Shri Shri Jagannath Bhattasubhadra Maharani ki. Shri Shri Gaur Nithai ki. So, he made one sabha, I told you. Bhagavad Samsar, Vaishnava Society. Hmm? All prominent Vaishnavas joined, but one fellow did not join. What's his name? Raghunath Das Babaji. There was one fellow. Hmm? He thought that Kedaranath was unauthorized. He even uh, advised other Vaishnavas, don't associate with Kedarnath, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, like that he had told them. Mm. Mm. And then he contacted a deathly illness and Jagannath appeared to him in a dream and told him, uh, go and take the mercy of Kedarnath. Uh, so then Kedarnath gave him special medicines and cured him and Babaji was blessed with the true awareness of his spiritual position of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Then he joined him after that. Mm. And there was another fellow called Radesham Charan Das Babaji, not Radesham Das. Huh? <laughs> this is Radesham Charan Das Babaji, somebody. Hmm? See, he preached and printed books advising a perverted style of Kirtan. Huh? Nithai Gaur Radesham Japa Hare Krishna. Hare Rama. How many of you have heard that? Yeah, when you go to Puri or Vrindavan, you hear that. So he, he concocted that and he has been singing that. Huh? Yeah. So. Kedarnath Bhakti Thakur tried to preach to him for a long time and hard, but uh, you know, after a long time of preaching, he came to his senses and begged forgiveness. Uh, of course, after six months, he went mad and he left, he says. But point is, Bhakti Thakur tried to rectify all these people, many, many big people. Uh, see, Bhakti Thakur's son had a skin disease. But when he went and lied down overnight in Lord Chaitanya's birthplace, he got cured. Huh? Amazing, no? 
So Raja of Puri had misused temple money of 80,000 rupees for his own sense pressure and Bhaktivinoda Thakur chastised him. He didn't worry that he is a king. He may force the king that you have to offer 52 offerings of bhoga daily to the Lord. And, uh, and Raja was angry at Kedarnath. With the help of 50 Brahmin peace, he began a yajna for killing Kedarnath. Can you imagine? Uh, this went on for 30 days. When the last oblation was offered in the fire, the king's own son died, not Kedarnath died. Huh? That's it. There is another fellow, William Duke, clearing his conscience of guilt and trying to remove Bhaktivinoda Thakur out of fear of his greatness. There was an Sir William Duke uh, who greeted Bhaktivinoda Thakur and escorted him into his office. You know, he asked forgiveness from him. Why did he ask forgiveness? Because he said, I tried to remove you from the district magistrate post. Mm. Because I thought if very highly qualified Indians like you take it up, you know, our British people, their power will diminish. I thought like that. And then Bhaktivinoda Thakur told him, I considered you to be a good friend and well-wisher all along. And then he said, hmm. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur blessed him. In this way, there are many people who tried to trouble Bhaktivinoda Thakur, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur stood on the path of truth without any hesitation. So his final pastimes, he retired from his post as a deputy magistrate in 1894. His age was 56. That means Vanaprastha stage. Now you want to take off. Huh? And though his move was opposed by his family and the government authorities. Huh? So he stayed in the, at uh, Swarup Ganga to worship and lecture and revise his old writings. Huh? So here is a photo of Bhaktivinoda Thakur as a High Court Magistrate in Jagannath Puri with all court officials. Huh? The one with the beard, you see, no? that's Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So he made one bhajan kuti at uh, Jagannath Puri. Today if you go, there is one bhakti kuti you will see in the seashore. You know, we have a Bhaktivinoda's big deity is also there. Generally we go there, there is Iskand temple also nearby from there. So that, that's a place for solitary worship. Because why did he do that near the ocean beach? Because Lord Chaitanya would go from Gambira to the ocean beach uh, uh, to chant daily between morning 5 a.m. to... Uh, noon, 12 or 1, he will chant daily. Almost 2 lakh names he would chant. That's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur also made one bhajan kuti for chanting there. So, he accepted the Baba Jivesh in 1908. Until 1910, he would move between Calcutta and Puri. Continue to write. Mm. Like our Prabhupada was staying in Vindavan and going to Delhi to print back and forth. Similarly, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was staying in Puri, going to Calcutta to print. No, like that. After he stopped all activity and remained absorbed in the holy name of Krishna, he shut himself up and entered samadhi, claiming paralysis. No? He entered the eternal pastimes on 1914. No? Yeah. He returned to his sweet pastimes in the spiritual world. No? And his samadhi uh, was kept in the Godrum Dweep. No? See, in Sri Sri Radha Govinda's Eternal pastimes, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a Kamala Manjari, hmm? a confidential gopi assistant to the Ananga Manjari. Ananga Manjari is Balaram, who explains this Ananga Manjari. So he becomes Balaram's assistant uh, as Kamala Manjari. Hmm? Radharani is younger sister. Uh, and to Rupa Manjari, who appeared in Ch Chaitanya's time as Sri Rupa Goswami. Here are some special things about Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He would wear coat and pant to coat with double size tulasi neck beads and tilak. <laughs> he would wear coat, suit, boot, everything but he would be wearing double size tul thick tul uh, neck beads and prominent tilak while going to court. And he avoided luxurious life. He was never proud. Spoke in multiple languages. In Bengali, Sanskrit, English, Latin, all that. He never kept any loan. Huh? He never accepted any gift from anyone. Uh, he disliked theatres. Because they were frequented by women and people who are uh, meant for, I mean, who are watching sense gratification. Uh, always charitable to brahmanas and equally befriended all castes of people. Hmm. At what age he started writing? At the age of 12. Uh, he would never chew beetle leaves. Uh, 
So he didn't care for any titles or honors, even offered by government. He was very strict in moral principles. Every month he would shave clean. Yeah. He could find time. You want to know how he spent his time? You can, you can see his daily schedule. You'll be shocked. Okay, he predicted about Lord, uh, I mean, uh, in Lord Chaitanya's precepts and teachings, in that he predicted Prabhupada will appear and Prabhupada appeared. Very soon the Harinam Sankirtan will spread all over the world. Oh, when will that day come when people from America, England, France, Germany and Russia will take up the Kathals and Vrindangas and chant Hare Krishna in their towns? And that became true, isn't it? So he predicted these two things, appearance of Prabhupada and, and also Harinam Sankirtan worldwide. Oh, when will that day come when the fair-skinned foreigners will come to Shida Mayapur and join with the Bengali Vishnu to chant, Jai Sachinandana, Jai Sachinandana. So he said, when will that day be? Like that he wrote in that book. See, here is his clock. What time he takes rest at night? What time he gets up, do you want to know? See, he gets up at 10 o'clock. Only two hours he will sleep. And then after that, you will start writing. The right side pen is shown, see that. And then how long you will write? Till 4 a.m. you will write. How many hours? Six hours you will write. So our Prabhupada started at 12.30. Bhagavan Thakur started at 10. So 10 to 4 he will write. Then after 4, what he will do? 4 to 4.30 a.m. Again, stop writing and take rest. And 4.30 he would get up and... That means half an hour, half an hour only he takes rest. 8 to 8, 30, I mean, sorry, 8 to 10, 2 hours rest. Then 6 hours writing. Then half an hour rest. Then he would get up and chant. And then till 7 a.m. chanting. Uh, 4.30 take bath. 5 to 7, 2 hours chanting. Hmm. Then 7 a.m. he would start writing letters. Uh, then 7.30, he would start studying Shastras. 8.30, he would receive the guests. And else he will continue to read. Uh, and 9.30 a.m. again, he would take another short rest. Uh, see, 9.45, only how many minutes? 15 minutes only. <laughs> he would rise and take bath and take prasad. Some quarter glass of milk, couple of chapatis and fruit. 9.55, he would go to court. Uh, five minutes, he would reach the court. So, 10, uh, ten to 1, uh, three hours. And then 1 o'clock, he would return home and then refresh. Again, return to court. Yeah, see? 2 to 5. 3 plus 3, 6 hours. That's all. Oh, 5 o'clock, he is returning home and translating Sanskrit Shastras to Bengali. And then 7 o'clock, he takes bath and takes prasada. 8 p.m. rest again. Total rest, if you see how much he takes rest, if you see. Hmm. Anybody calculated how much rest he takes? Huh? Total of 3 hours. Total of 3 hours. But that is his schedule. See, sleep is only 3 hours. Writing, 8 and a half hours. Japan study, 4 and a half hours. Work six hours. This is his lifestyle. Bhaktu Nanda Thakur. Please all of you repeat. Namo Bhakti Vinodaya. Satchi Dhananda Namine. Gaura Shakti Swarupaya. Rupanu Gavarayate. I offer my respectful obeisances and to Sri, Sri La Sachidananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who is the transcendental energy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is a strict follower of the Goswamis, headed by Sri Rupa Goswami. So his worshipable deity is Gaur Gadadhar. Hmm? You will see, just like we worship Gaur Nitai, like that he worshipped Gaur Gadadhar. Hmm? So, uh, that, is, that is why here it is said that. Uh, hmm, he is the transcendental energy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Huh? So, Gaura Shakti Swarupaya. So, Bhaktuna Thakur is the seventh Goswami who began preaching all over the world in the beginning. His son, 
established 64 mathas in India and also started preaching to many Westerners in India, viceroys and everybody. And our Srila Prabhupada went out of India, travelled and extensively preached all across the globe. So now we will do uh, Guru Puja for him. Shri Bhaktivinoda Thakur ki? Srila Prabhupada ki? Jai.